everybody. Good evening. I'm so glad you can join us for this program, Intuitive Mixed Media Art. I'm Becky and I'm a librarian with Tampa Hillsborough County Library. I'm here today with our presenter, local mixed media artist, Vitalia Rapina. Hope I said your name correctly. Uh, also known as Vita. Vitalia is an optical mixed media artist. She uses combinations of various organic and inorganic materials along with geometric patterns to create illustrations, paintings, and a combination of the two. Uh, Vitalia, would you like to introduce yourself a little more? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody just calls me Vita. I know I have a pretty unusual name. I'm actually originally from Russia, but I've been living in the United States for a really long time. Um, like Becky said, I'm a optical mixed media artist, which means that I create a, an organic geometric pattern in most of my work to relay movement. Um, and of course, <clears throat> implying mixed media, I love using different materials, um, a lot of which I already have. Um, so yeah, I'm a local artist. Um, I have shows uh, almost every weekend. This month, I will be at the Earth Fest in Lakeland, which is going to be a three-day um, Earth Fest festival celebrating the Earth, celebrating the environment. There's going to be music, there's going to be art, and a lot of different vendors. Um, so definitely come and check that out. Tickets are available online for a really good price. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. Before we get to our video, I do want to remind everybody that they can go and type in their questions so we can get to those questions at the very end. Anytime you submit them throughout the video, um, just as soon as you think of them. So we'll answer those once it's complete. Now let's go and get started with this video. Today is a beautiful day for art. Thank you so much for joining me in this mixed media process. First, I'd like to start out by sharing with you some of my favorite references. This is a fine arts contemporary magazine by High Fructose. I like to look through because they have really eclectic works that really stand out. If you ever need any sort of artistic reference, art magazines are the way to go. Science books are also a really great reference for drawing animals, figures, landscapes, all of the above. They have some really interesting patterns in here as well as colors, so it's always good to look through the books that you have at your home and see how they can benefit you in your art process. Recently, I've actually been very influenced by dance and movement and music, so I went ahead and bought a sheet of music paper to use for our collage. I'm also very often inspired by the materials that I already have. I have this used paintbrush that can no longer be utilized, and so what I'm going to do is use a little bit of spray paint that I have here from Cobra and NBQ and make this paintbrush usable in the collage. So just a important note, always use a face covering and work outside when using spray paint. I also have one of my illustrations or doodles, if you will, that I've created a while ago. And so I really have been wanting to use this piece and so we'll be using that in our collage as well. Now remember everybody, this is mixed media, so if you don't have an illustration like this, you can really use anything you want. You can use cutouts from different calendars, papers that you find, create some doodles, maybe you have a sticker that you really like, maybe you have a watercolor, or just anything that you find that is not something in itself but something that could be a part of something else so feel free to use really anything especially if it's paper now there are a few things that are required 
which is going to be, of course, your 10 by 10 canvas or 12 by 12 canvas, sorry. So that's gonna be set to the side. You're also going to need a hot glue gun and some glue. You don't need too terribly much unless you're gonna be doing a lot of embellishment work. Let's also see what I have in my tool bag. Wrong way. All right, this is probably one of the most important things you can have. This isn't necessarily an extreme requirement for this mixed media piece, but this is a really great tool to have as an artist, especially as a mixed media artist, because it's multiple tools at once. So you have a hammer, pincher, and a mini hatchet here, along with um, some multi-tools here on the side. And this is just, it's really nice because it's compact, so I can take it with me and there's just so many different options. You know, you have a screwdriver, flathead, everything that you really need. And so I'm gonna be using this for finishing my piece by wiring it. Um, of course, we have our paints. I'm gonna be using acrylic paints today from Windsor & Newton. Really just these three colors, not anything too crazy. I'm gonna put these to the side. Also have a rag, it's always good to have on the side. We have our scissors, we have our palette knives, and then we also have some markers. So these are all gonna be used in our mixed media painting today. Make sure you also have some brushes. Some smaller brushes are preferable, but we're gonna start with a larger brush today as well. So let me review all of this with you one more time. In this stage in our process, we have a clean and comfortable working space with plenty of room and all of our materials in front of us. I decided to add some oil pastels to our material sets. These are really cool because they provide a really interesting texture that's going to go right on top of everything uh, that we've been layering on. So I wanted to add these. We have our paints, we have our paint brushes, no particular size needed and no particular color scheme needed. Today we're going to be working with white, black, magenta, and also a little bit of yellow. We also have all of our papers and our canvas. We have a few drawing selected and if not no worries at all we have our musical sheet something that we can use to layer in the back as well as some mirrors that you can buy online they're decorative wall mirrors that have adhesive on the back so they're easy to work with they even come with directions We also have some book pages. This is a book that I found that I am comfortable with ripping the pages out of. Not every single book deserves that fate. Um, and of course, make sure that, you know, it's something that really will be um, used instead of thrown away because books are very important as well. So we have these materials. I also wanted to introduce a few um, optional materials that are really nice for mixed media work. I have some embellishments like these sunflowers that I'm gonna be using. I'm only gonna be using a few. These are nice because they come with stems on the back so you could do something with that as well once you get to that final stage of your, pa your painting. I also have some regular stickers to fit the theme, musical notes, and leaves. I also have this really interesting um, ribbon, I guess. So I'm going to be using that to create texture and put on the back. 
I also have string. So this is really fun to use for mixed media. You can use this alongside your hot glue gun. It creates a really nice texture and a really soft texture as well. So that's not something that we're going to be using today, but it's something that you can always use in your mixed media pieces. I also wanted to show you guys that I have a jar of gems and pearls and this is something that you can use um, as well if your jewelry breaks you can save these really cool gems and beads and use them in your mixed media work again as alongside your um, hot glue gun we have so many materials in front of us this could be really overwhelming Let's only put the most prevalent materials in front of our workspace and reduce all of the other clutter. Now that we have our essential beginning materials, we can start planning the layout of our mixed media project. As this is drying, you want to take your papers and cut them out with your scissors. Now that we have all of our paper cut out, we can put a little bit of yellow on the canvas. We're going to put just a little bit because I wanted to add some gold embellishing at the end. We don't want to overdo it. The canvas is almost dry, so I'm going to use a little bit of white to enhance and brighten that yellow color. Remember, there's no wrong way of doing this at all. It's intuitive. 
whatever feels good, whatever you find balance in in your eye is what is right. I'm going to try to use all of my paint on the palette so that I don't waste any. Remember, this is a good point to add to the borders of your canvas if you haven't already. I like to check once or twice. It's always good to add a little bit of color. in case your client doesn't want to frame. I'm really loving this white because it really softens the canvas. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to stop here. We've made it to the second step of layering. So this is the trickiest part. Um, it's just finding placement where everything you think should go. And I have a dilemma. I like both of these patterns here, but I feel like one would be too much just as the book page was a little bit too much with the musical notes you don't want it to be too overbearing and so now all i'm really doing is just finding where everything kind of fits together before i actually glue it down and it doesn't have to be exact it's just kind of Right now, just planning, and even though we drew our plan, it doesn't have to be exactly like that either. I like to make things line up, whereas here, the flowers kind of line up nicely with the hair and the base. I think that's nice. Do you want to move her down a little bit? Put that layer over that. So yeah, I think after all, this is a much better pattern than the latter because we have a little bit more of it to work with and we have multiple layers. It's a little too much. You want to leave a little room in between. But we'll see here what we do. This doesn't seem to fit too well, but that's okay because we still have the mirrors here that we can use on top, but that is a later step as well. Now that I have a fairly de decent spot for everything, I'm going to go ahead and use my Mod Podge and my brush to apply from the bottom layers down. So my darkest layers are probably going to be my lower layers and my original illustrations as well as my figures are going to be more towards the top. So let's get started.
We are so close to being completed. Now we can add our final layering steps. We have our mirrors here that we can use to break up some negative space that we've created with the paper. So here where there's a lot of, of one thing, of its own thing, we can put another shape to kind of break it up and make it seem more organic. I really like these mirrors because they also provi provide a interactive um, aspect into the work. You can actually look into the work. Right now they have a film over them and that is for the best. Uh, we want to leave that on there before um, we complete everything. Now we also have this paintbrush that I spray painted. So this is going to be hot glued onto the top. Maybe move it a little to the side. Set the mirrors here. Move the mirror down a little bit. We also have this guy. This is also going to be hot glued on. I don't love the color, so I'm going to paint over it just a little bit towards the end as well. I really like the placement to be here. Or even maybe here. That looks beautiful. All right. We also do have these embellishments we can't forget about. It's good to add them now, actually. So let's do that. Ideally, you just want to add them anywhere where there's a lot of negative space, anywhere that you want texture. If you'd like, you can add an extra layer of Mod Podge in between. These do tend to come off sometimes, so... If you can't find a spot, just put it back, no problem. Let's add another one on the other side for balance. These come off real easy, so I will actually add another layer of Mod Podge as well. Let's peel it back off of these mirrors and add them on as well. Don't press too hard on your canvas. You can always put your hand behind the canvas and push from underneath. If you push too hard, the canvas will, um, will bend. These mirrors are tricky. Now that I have those on there, I've plugged in my hot glue gun and 
am allowing it to get hot. You want it to be a really nice temperature so that the glue comes out fast and you're able to apply your materials so that they bond quickly. So let's give that a minute. In the meantime, because of my stickers weren't really working properly, I've decided to use these oil pastels. So let's pick a few colors and get started. I like to use these together sometimes, so I'll take both of them and create some lines. Um, sometimes I start on the side because that way I can see the texture and how it's going to play out. So let's do that. It's very light and very organic. This is a brighter color, for sure. So let's see how that looks on the main piece. I really want to highlight more of her hair here. So I'm going to just create some lines that are parallel to her figure. I'm going to do the same thing for some of the other papers. I'm going to create some textures. The white is very light shows up much better on darker tones. All right, that was great to see. Let me just make sure everything's working. Okay, thank you so much for filming that for us ahead of time. Of course, yeah, it was a beautiful process. I really enjoyed it. It was definitely very nice. Before we get for questions, I'm just gonna show the artwork one more time. And I have it here too. Close that. Awesome. Right. And I can actually take off the mirrors now. Should I do that now, Becky? Yeah, sure. Sure. So I already kind of, um, there's a film on here, and I always suggest, like, wherever you're transporting it to, just leave it till the very last step, um, because it's really satisfying at the end. <laughs> wow. That's cool, and it makes a huge difference too. I can oh, see. Yeah, it's a huge, <laughs> huge difference, and that's why I love working with mirrors. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's awesome. You can put it now. It can really brighten a space in a room. You can put it by a door or by a window, and that's you know that's the perfect perfect place for them. It is, yeah. All right, and then we also have some eBooks to share with everybody. Uh, let's see. So our first book was actually recommended by you or suggested by you, and it's the complete book of mixed media art by Walter Foster Creative, and it features a whole variety of mixed media techniques, and it also has step-by-step -step examples of how to use different art tools, which is great for people who might not have experience with them. And another ebook that I selected is Create Your Own Life Book by Tamara Laporte. And it walks readers through 16 different mixed media drawing and painting projects with the goals of unleashing creativity. And both of these books are available on Hoopla. And with Hoopla, everything's available right away instantly. There's never any wait. So you can get those books right now. <laughs> yeah, these are really great books. And I definitely wanted to suggest a book that included how to work with paper specifically, because I felt that we used a lot of paper for this project. So that's definitely a good one. Yeah, thank you for that. That was great. And now we have a few questions. The first question, of course, is what was your inspiration behind the piece we saw? 
Um, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, so I was have re recently been inspired by music and dancing, like I mentioned a little bit in the video. Um, I am also really just inspired by using materials that I have. I feel like it's almost like a puzzle that you have to uh, solve when you pick several different, um, whether it's illustrations, um, you know, just pieces of scraps of paper, whatever you want to use, even the paintbrush. Um, it's kind of like putting together a puzzle. Um, and that's really the beauty of mixed media. That's how I started my work is <clears throat> using materials that I already had because I didn't really have um, a budget. I didn't have, um, and I really didn't know what materials to really get. So it was uh, really interesting being able to grow as an artist um, through mixed media art specifically. And another question is, um, let's see, uh, what do I do if I don't have access to these materials? So, um, like I said, you can really use anything that you have available to you. Um, we get a lot of advertisements in the mail. Um, something that I used for this piece was an Ulta um, advertisement magazine. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes there's really good figures in there. And then if you can um, by chance get a like any sort of other magazines, um, you know, a lot of them are for free. The newspaper also has, um, you know, really cool textures and it's a really nice paper actually, the newspaper because it's a little thinner. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be a little faster when you're working with it so that it doesn't get all wrinkled up when you apply the glue, but um, it's really, it's a good texture paper to work with. Um, I like to gather stuff and I also like to look on online and see if maybe somebody's throwing something away in the neighborhood that I live in. Um, I found so, so many really cool frames and complete pieces of artwork um, that I've, you know, painted over, of course, but, um, you know, people throw away all kinds of stuff and sometimes mm -hmm. you can find real treasure. So, you know, picking something that is kind of the base for your project is really good. And then seeing what you can find, that's kind of a, a good process, I would say for mixed media, because, you know, trying to buy all of these materials is definitely not realistic for most people. So, you know, don't feel pressured to buy anything. You can find most of these materials um, for very cheap or even for free. Mm -hmm. It's true, yeah. I see people posting all the time on, on uh... Facebook Marketplace free free items. There's all these great cheap items too at yard sales. So, mm -hmm. and it's easier it's sometimes to have a frame. So, like when people uh, want to sell a painting or give away a painting that's already in a frame, that's a really perfect way for you to start because there's usually already something on there, and that gives you a little bit of inspiration too to go from. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great advice. Uh, there was also a question about the illustrations you included in the painting. Did you purposely make them for this painting or do you just have those kind of little doodles that just are around? <laughs> yeah, I have literally so many little papers everywhere. Um, I made these a long time ago. I used this in the video as well just to show the variety of different stuff that I have. Um, I made these illustrations more than like two years ago, I believe. I got a circle tool um, as a gift, you know, to make the circle shape when you're drawing. Um, and so I started just making a bunch of circles and, you know, I just felt like it was never good enough to be in other paintings and the color. Yellow is not very easy to work with actually. So, um, yeah, you know, this opportunity came along and I really wanted to to use it. And so I kind of structured, I actually structured a lot of the piece um, based off of those illustrations. Yeah. So kind of going off what you said with yellow is not easy to use. How did you choose your color scheme and come up with everything? 
Um, so <clears throat> like I said, like the illustrations definitely um, allowed for me to kind of know that I wanted to create a lighter, more feminine piece. I mean, I always create more feminine pieces, unfortunately for the guys, but um, <clears throat> the illustration, these two illustrations really kind of set the tone for the color scheme. Mm -hmm. And then I found her and I really liked her. I really liked her hair. So that's why I picked this uh, figure. And so like, I think everything was kind of structured off of that. Um, I was able to incorporate this with this. And so the white really balances everything out. And the black, um, after I chose these patterns here, I decided to incorporate a little bit of the black paint as well. And then the sunflowers helped balance it out. I looked for um, materials that had a similar color scheme. So definitely the color scheme is something that you want to decide after you have those base materials, those materials that kind of inspired you to make the piece. Right, just one or two questions left. Um, how did you get interested into art in the first place? And do you have to go to school to be an artist? No, you <laughs> probably shouldn't go to school to be an artist. I'm kidding. Um, there's a lot of really great mentorship courses. I actually just finished an online mentorship course through Visual Arts Passage. Um, they did a really great job, but they are um, more geared for like professional developed artists and how to kind of navigate the uh, the, the field um, because there's just so many different options and opportunities for artists. Um, so yeah, you know, like going to school for art was something that I was interested in when I was younger, um, and but I never had the opportunity to do that. The schools that I went to didn't offer advanced art classes. Um, and I have always been drawing. I've been drawing since I've been a child. Um, but I feel like learning art can be so diverse. And I think learning the process is more of what you really want to learn the process and technique as opposed to, you know, how, what is art and how how should it be structured of course there's the elements and principles of art that you know it's helpful for you to know so that you can converse you can talk about um the different aspects of a piece for example like this one um you know like for example like dimension composition value line you know how does that create movement um and flow and you know so those are it's good to know those things, but going to school for art, I would say sometimes it hinders you as well because everybody has their own way of creating and art is, art should be fluid. Art should never be too terribly structured. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I would recommend more of like a mentorship course if you are going to invest in any sort of art education or just reading books like the eBooks that you suggested for us. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, it's a great way to get started and really find out um, where your interests lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Great All right, question. Just my last question is, as you talked a little bit about your um, art shows and going to markets, can you tell us a little bit about what that experience is like? Well, it's definitely been quite a journey. Um, I originally actually went to school for environmental management in agriculture and natural resources. So doing this now is a really big change from what I thought that I would be doing with my life. Um, it has been a beautiful experience though. It's been such an eye-opening and encouraging experience. Um, you know, somebody, like me who is sensitive and has anxiety um, can definitely say like it's not easy but every or most artists that I've met especially in our community here in Tampa Bay they're really encouraging um, and I think a lot of us recognize that um, 
you know, we're all just so different. We've all been through so many different experiences and we all come from different backgrounds and we really embrace each other pretty well. Um, and we create opportunities from, for each other all the time. Um, I try to do more shows than markets because markets um, are more for like crafters and sellers of goods. Mm -hmm. uh, my art is, um, it's all kinds of different sizes and shapes. And so I think it makes it a little more difficult to sell at a market. So I try to mm -hmm. do more shows like Thursday, I was in Hyde Park at the public house for um, a fashion show. And so I live painted during the fashion show. That was a beautiful experience. And so I do more events like that. And um, I also do tutor privately. That's great. And it's great to hear there's such a great supportive community of artists here in Tampa. It really is. It's, it's so beautiful and there's so many of us everywhere. So definitely come out and um, show some love every single weekend we have events going on. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for answering all those questions and sharing your art with us. Um, if people do want to reach out to the library, you can reach us at hcplc.org slash contact or give us a call at 813-273-3652. If you do want to reach out to Vitalia, you can go and reach her at her link tree, which is link tree, link T-R-E, sorry, link tr.ee slash volta.vita or you can email her at volta.vita.art at gmail.com and you can check out all of our upcoming library events at hcplc.org slash events and I just want to thank you one more time for everyone for joining us and thank you again to Vitalia for sharing everything with us today. Yeah, thank you so much, Rebecca, and thank you to the whole library. You guys do so many amazing events, um, and I look forward to doing this again. Thank you so much for everybody to everybody for tuning in. All right, we'll see you all soon. Good night, everybody. Good night.